Welcome to Cannabis Investing Newsletter. I'm D.H. Taylor. Today I want to do something a little different. I was watching, uh, viewing my uh, Twitter account and someone had posited a question. True Leaf or Cure Leaf? Which of these would be a better investment? And my initial reaction was, that's easy. It's, and then I had to think about it. Well, there's, they're both seeing some exceptional revenue growth this coming year. As a matter of fact, I've written very positively for both companies. These are two MSOs that I like a great deal. So when I thought about the revenue that they're projecting, the guidance we got, I thought, well, they're different in sizes. TrueLeave is printing about $850 million this year. We're expecting about $1.2 billion out of CureLeaf. So that doesn't necessarily mean anything if you just consider revenue because you have to pay for each share. And when you look at the share prices, they're different. So I thought, started thinking about um, gross margins. They're both pretty good. One outplays the other. And then I started thinking about operating costs. Which ones are more efficient? Again, there was one that edged out the other, and I felt that was important. Finally, we get down to EBITDA and to see which company can print better profits. And somebody, one of the companies kind of edged out the other. I wanted to put together this exercise simply so that you could see what it's like to compare one company versus another. Because of these companies, their similarities, I thought it was an interesting sort of exercise. I think both these companies are going to do well. But I also think one is going to outperform the other. I've got some data. I've got some charts. We can look at them. I do want to take a quick second just to say a couple things. Number one, um, it's Friday. This is only my second video this week. I've had a little issue with YouTube. So I think we've gotten that resolved. I put in a complaint last week and it hadn't heard anything. I was really kind of waiting until... I could get this resolved. I did get an email, I think, just the other day, and they said, you know what? We see what you're saying. We see what the issue is. We're fixing it. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. Great. Now I can move forward. I've got a backlog. Hollister is next. Hollister is out of Hollister, California, just on the other side of Salina, California, which are both outside of Monterey Bay. This is an excellent area for growing cannabis on an outdoor basis. Hollister would be next door neighbors to, I mean, not immediately next door neighbors, but uh, Lowell Cannabis, which are Lowell Farms, which is one of my top picks. How does Hollister rank? That video should be up probably tomorrow. I've also got uh, Terra Tech and one other, Weed MD. Those are lined up, and then I have a fourth video. So although this is my second video for the week, I've got backlog. I think there's four or five videos that are just going to one day after another, after another, and after another. So let's look at some data on this and be looking for quite a lot more videos coming from me over the next couple of days. Let's look at a couple of essentials. For this, everything is going to be truly first, then cure leaf. I just started that way. Doesn't indicate what my picks are or anything of that nature. This is just the uh, order it is. So when you see data come up, it may not be labeled. It's true leaf. The second set of data will always be cure leaf. There are times when it's all pointed out, but nonetheless, in this one, we're looking at TCNNF and CURLF down here on the OTC in the United States. Market capitalizations. 2.75 billion for True Leaf, 6 billion for Cure Leaf. It's a moving target. Um, we've seen a little bit of selling. It's off just a little bit, but the numbers I took from this snapshot equate where they are at this time. So, regardless of where the market is today, it works on this uh, chart I've got here. You can buy TCNNF for 40 bucks. You can uh, pay 15 bucks to get Cure Leaf. Again, a moving target. I am aware of that. Um, and that's where the valuation came from with this. True Leaf has about $127 million on a weighted average right now, shares outstanding, and warrants. Effectively, they are $190 going into the end of the year. I'm using the $190. Um, I think Cure Leaf is actually $704. 
three, 702 million or something like this. I just printed 700 just to keep it nice and even for, for round numbers. It's not that significant. Nonetheless, these are the numbers that I'm looking for. Shares outstanding. So when we look at the $40 and the $15, if you actually factor out the numbers there, it's almost dollar for dollar. Projected revenue, $850 million for TrueLeaf for the year, $1.2 billion for CureLeaf. I mentioned that in the introduction. You're looking at the difference in revenue, and I have the projected, projected the next three quarters out uh, for True Leaf and Cure, Cure Leaf here. One is obviously bigger than the other. But you are you have to factor out shares outstanding and price paid. So although revenue is different, more doesn't necessarily mean more because there's a different number of shares outstanding and there's a different price. So if you are trying to compare two different companies, one towards the other, don't necessarily look at the revenue and say, well, they make more, so therefore they must make more. Well, they may sell more. That's true. You need to break it down. How much per share? That's the number one thing right there when you're considering this. Then how many shares outstanding? The shares outstanding act like a piece of pie. Um, you know, you're looking at 190 million slices in one pie and 700 million slices in the other. This would be the reason why one is trading at $15 and the other one's trading at $40. You get much more uh, a per revenue per share. You get much more out of True Leaf, but you're paying for it. As it turns out, the differential isn't that much. As I mentioned, 190 million shares outstanding versus 700 million shares outstanding. With 850 million in projected revenue uh, versus 1.2 billion or 1,200 million, it factors out to be $4.47 per share in revenue for True Leaf versus a buck 71. Mind you, the share price was 40 bucks versus 15 dollars if you look at that the ratio revenue per share per uh, cost of share they're almost exactly the same so when you start this analysis this little exercise of which one of these is better which one would outperform here's an indication that there really is no outperformance from one company towards the other and again, I got this idea from a Twitter uh, tweet that I saw run across my screen. The fact is, I wasn't even following the guy, although I know he exists. And I went backwards looking for this tweet so I could reference it. Um, so many people tweet about him that it ends up in my feed anyway. I ended up following him. I'll give him a shout out when I announce this on Twitter myself. Nonetheless, um, you, if you start slicing this up, you can see why it was difficult for this gentleman to sit there and say, oh, I'm going to pick this one over this one because, and that's obvious. Well, from a revenue per share perspective, nothing is obvious. Let's move forward. Gross margins, we can start to see some differentiation. But don't go hitting the buy button just yet. Again, uh, TrueLoof came first. But if you look at the gross margin pictures, they're almost like identical except for one thing. There's about a 10% difference in the numbers. Let me show you something else. You're looking at 63.5% for true leaf gross, ma gross margins over a certain period of quarters. Now, they had an outlying quarter just, uh, I think it was December, and they printed something like 97%, which was outside of the norm. We can dismiss this because they had outlying factors that didn't, that aren't a course of the normal business. So I use the weighted average on their uh, gross margins. Nonetheless, 63.5%, that's solid. 
some of the best performing companies I'm looking at, 60 to 65%, you're hitting it. You go over that, there are some, and you're hitting it good. So for those who don't know, gross margins, you have a cost of actually putting together a product. Maybe you're selling a pre-roll. Well, there's packaging. There's the wrappers. There is uh, the product inside. The What is the cost of that? That's where gross margins come in. If in, if we're looking at True Leaf, if they sold that at ten dollars retail, all right, they would keep six dollars and thirty five cents of that. Versus Cure Leaf would keep five dollars and thirty six cents of the same pre roll. Well, which one's better? You obviously want as the highest possible gross margins you can get. But then again, we look at Cure Leaf; they're selling about 30, 40 percent more in revenue over top of truly so although truly keeps more they're selling less for now thing is truly has a 10 percent edge over cure leaf what if they drop their prices now all of a sudden cure leaf is going to be scrambling if they were to go head to head true leaf would edge them out easily in this regards right here because they have the ability to lower their prices because they have a 10 percent edge over cure leaf in the margin department that to me that's a winning advantage right there once again true leaf came first with the blue numbers cure leaf with the green in this data point again about a 10 percent differentiation true leaf is has an operating efficiency of about 33 percent versus it's about 34 percent versus cure leaves 44 percent okay what is operating efficiency we take total operating costs and we divide that over top of total revenue total operating costs include sales general administrative uh, uh, things of running the business have nothing to do with actually the product itself sales all right the entire sales force who's out there uh doing the social media who's out there connecting with um uh, the various dispensaries things like this what does it take to get eyeballs on this product that's sales general okay the rent for the building that's not put into necessarily the uh cost of goods so it comes out of sgna SGNA a for administrative that's the salaries for all the people running the business itself all right so SGNA on an efficiency basis now keep in mind total operating costs or to, yeah total operating costs does keep in uh when we look at EBITDA depreciation and amortization are taken out total operating costs has that in there so if you really wanted to look at the core business, you would look at total revenues, cost of goods, SG&A. Unfortunately, some companies report different things in different ways, even though they are GAAP, generally accepted accounting practices. So the actual term SG&A, when you're looking at a financial statement, there may be some differentiations of what one company may, might put in there versus another. EBITDA helps us out in there because you have your total operating costs which is everything that might be in there EBITDA takes out depreciation and amortization so that core is what we're looking at true leaf is just more efficient by a factor of 10 percent here I've got the uh, actual numbers it's 31.5 percent versus about 41.2 percent on a weighted average over the past couple quarters um, now both companies are going to see increased revenue. So Cureleaf could easily catch up in this department. At the same time, Cureleaf could easily catch up with gross margins. Keep in mind, total operating costs or SGNA, all that is divided over top of total revenue. Well, they're moving from about what is it, 850 million, all the way up to 1.2 billion. Uh, Cure Leaf is all right. That's a huge increase. 
But at the same time, Trulief, I think, printed 550 for last year. Now they're looking at 850. So they're going to see an increase in revenue. Total operating costs, total operating efficiencies is a mathematical equation. If their revenue goes up and if they keep their operating costs exactly the same, then this efficiency metric moves lower. I do expect that we'll probably see increases in total operating costs. They kind of go hand in hand. It's one of those things. If you want to make an omelet, you've got to break a couple eggs. As revenues, total revenues move higher, total operating costs because of sales and general administrative, they're going to move higher as well. Looking for increased EBITDA. And I have a quick chart here, but I'm going to move forward real fast. This is the EBITDA on a whole number. I've got the percentage basis, which I think is a little more telling when you're looking at this exercise. From a percentage basis, they're fairly close. And that's kind of surprising. Actually, it's really surprising. Cure Leaf and True Leaf are only a couple percentage points off in a bit of profitability, which makes no sense whatsoever. Number one, gross margins. There was a 10% gap right there. The next level down would be basically SGNA, which there was a 10% gap right there as well. Yet, when it comes to EBITDA, it's only a few percentage points, probably about four, four and a half percent. Nonetheless, this is one of the things I really looked at and I said, this is a sort of a standout. Gross margins is a huge standout. That is a, a, a key competitive advantage when you're looking at the two. If they were to go to head to head in every single neighborhood, all TrueLeave would have to do is just drop their prices. They've got a 10% advantage. They drop the prices, guess what? They're going to sell a lot more. Revenues increase rapidly, really rapidly. Because of that, CureLeaf is kind of back on their back of the heels, trying to figure out how can we increase sales. They're going to have to raise prices. By doing that, that cuts into their gross profits. So the fact that when we trickle all the way down to a bit of profitability, that there's only a couple percentage points difference, that was a little surprising to me. Nonetheless, TrueLeaf still does edge them out, but not by much. So we've got the gross margin comparison, 62.5 to 52.5 on a percentage basis. Truly wins all day long. That's huge, but it washes out. Let's move forward. Operating costs, Truly is operating on a far more efficient basis, another 10% there. Mind you, the 41% on Curaleaf is on $1.2 billion versus $850 million. So maybe there's this thing called marginal profits that are affecting theirs. Once you get so big, your profitability level declines because you're overutilizing certain uh, processes during the, the uh, production process. Not certain exactly because we don't have that ability to break that down. Uh, I've not read anything from any of the analysts who are questioning uh, management or anything like that. Nonetheless, that's 10% over top of the efficiency level that TrueLeave is, is operating at. So on, on the one hand, TrueLeave is kicking butt on gross margins and operating efficiencies. But on a percentage basis for EBITDA, it's only about a percent, maybe two and a half, depending on how the numbers come in over the next quarter. This almost washes out entirely any gains in gross margins and operating costs. The fact that at the bottom line, they're neck and neck. Still, for my money, I look at TrueLeave as just sort of edging them out enough because it could turn in, this snowflake could turn into a snowball, which could turn into an avalanche if they were to go head to head. That's not necessarily the case. They're not in every single market in the same place, but they are competitive in certain areas. Uh, they do see they are right around the corner from each other in a couple areas, but not 100%. Also, keep in mind, truly picked up um, uh, Terrasend or not Terrasend um, Harvest Health out of Arizona. I think that's going to be huge. I think Harvest Health is going to crush it. 
but we really can't factor that in right now because we're looking at the numbers that they have right in front of them. Still, with the gross margin picture, that to me might be the one deciding factor. And if you were to just look at the numbers and say, wow, Cure Relief has higher numbers, period. So they must be better. Not necessarily, because on a percentage basis, it doesn't really factor out because you're paying a certain dollar amount per share. Still, gross margins, if True Leaf were really to accelerate this and really start trying to hammer on Cure Relief, if they could, they'd be able to drop their prices and all of a sudden their revenue would go up considerably. That's something to keep in mind. I wanted to put together charts to show where these charts were uh, on a relative basis. I mean, they're almost duplicates, except one outpaced the other by some percentage point, and that was True Leaf. This one, this right here, may be the one variable. The fact that they are able to compete on gross margins a little more. This is still the infancy of all these companies, but these little micro variables are going to play in and this is where that competitive advantage that true leaf has over cure leaf will ultimately pay out more so even though each share is forty dollars per share you really don't care about that because if you have ten thousand dollars a hundred thousand dollars or one thousand dollars to invest you're buying a portion of a company you're getting slightly more competitiveness with TrueLeaf over CureLeaf. And I think that's really kind of the minutia. And although you really don't see it too much now, it's the ripple effects throughout the next couple quarters and years coming that that's going to make a, a big factor. Plus, I really do like the Harvest Health uh, acquisition. Harvest Health, one of my top picks. Because of it's one of my top picks, truly became one of my top picks. If, in case you haven't seen the update that I uh, put up just about a couple weeks ago. This right here is probably the one determining factor. And it is those gross margins that will edge out. I want to say thanks for stopping by the website. Uh, if this is your first time at my uh, YouTube channel, please, by all means, hit the subscribe button. There's the bell, whatever that thing does. I guess it notifies you guys on a regular basis whenever I update uh, videos. I've got a bunch of videos coming in the next couple of days because of YouTube. At the same time, free email newsletter, subscribe. I send out an email on a daily basis when I'm able to update things, as long as YouTube cooperates. Um, I put in there the analysis that goes up to the website, and I know some of you guys only read my analysis and some of you guys only read my uh, or watch my videos nonetheless both of those things are in each email so hit that like subscribe button and also hit the uh, email newsletter subscription there's a bunch of links down below i want to say thanks for stopping by the youtube channel we'll see you in the next video